um, before we get started, I just need to just take a little survey of who's in here. Um, do I have any people who would consider themselves foodies? Anybody? Look at the hands went up immediately. Foodies. You know, foodies are people who really enjoy food. Like you enjoy going to restaurants. You don't mind trying new things. You probably leave Yelp reviews. That's who y'all are. You only go to restaurants based on Yelp reviews also. That's what, yeah, some of y'all, okay, some of y'all in here. Okay, I just want to see who's in the room. Do we have any picky eaters in the room? Oh, uh, yep, y'all are parents' worst nightmare. Lord, geez. there's your look, your baby, them raised it. Yes. Some of y'all picky eaters, do that, mm-hmm. Y'all can't hardly, th- yeah, we got to make, you the one doing all them special drink menus at, uh, Starbucks got us in line waiting. <laughs> all right, all right. I just kind of want to see who's in here. Because the subject today, what we're talking about today, is um, called You Are What You Eat. You are what you eat. And, you know, this is just not a catchy phrase. You know, when you grow up, you just always hear these phrases. This is just not a catchy phrase. It's actually scientifically true. Um, It's really true. The nutrients from the foods we eat provide the foundation and the structure and the function for wholeness of every little cell in our body, from the skin and hair to the muscle, the bones, digestive and immune systems. The health of the new cells in our body we make every day to replace the expired cells is determined by what we eat. I know, come on, we taking it back to biology class, science class. A diet full of processed foods that are are low in nutrients can make it harder for our bodies to build healthy cells and make it more likely to age prematurely or to get sick. Somebody say, touch your neighbor. Come on, do it one time for Pastor Mike. Touch your neighbor. We consent. Um, So, food choice is so important because we all need to eat, right? This is a basic function of human life. We all need to eat. Needing is necessary. It's a part of our lives in order to survive. And a study was done in the U.S. that said the average American spends 67 minutes a day eating and drinking beverages. 67 minutes a day. Summed up together, the average person spends a staggering 32,098 hours eating and drinking in their lifetime. That's a lot. That's give or take, because some of us eat a little more than others. Right? Eating is necessary. So our passage today centers around the concept of food, but not in the way that you would expect. The scripture I'm going to read today was so controversial that it made a lot of Jesus' disciples walk away from him. That's how how controversial it was. After Jesus spoke these words, many of them said, you know what, this is too much. It's too hard. It's too difficult. What are you talking about? It's too hard to understand. Jesus over here tripping, yo. They were like, Jesus is bugging, we got to go. Like, they packed up their things and left. This is how deep this verse is. Um, It comes from John 6, the Gospel of John, chapter 6. In your spare time, I would admonish you to read this whole chapter. It's about 70 verses. I was going to read them all today, but I figured y'all would get tired. So, Oh, y'all didn't laugh? Okay, that's cool. They was like, no, for real, don't read all 70 verses. It's a long chapter, but it is a good read because it sets up this whole thing that we're going to talk today. We're just going to take a little portion of it. Uh, Verse 51, it says, this is Jesus talking. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread, which I offer Uh, so the world may live, is my flesh. Then the people begin arguing with each other about what he meant. How can this man give us his flesh to eat, they asked. So Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. 
unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. Someone say within you. But anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise that person at the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I am him. I live because of the living Father who sent me. In the same way, anyone who feeds on me will live because of me. Why? Because I am the true bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will not die as your ancestors did, even though they ate manna, which was heavenly food, but will live forever. Woo! I can feel like the mic drop on that, right? God bless your word. Open your eyes that we can see you today. Can you just imagine the blank looks on the faces of the people after Jesus said this? Like, and when he was like, and stop, they was just probably like, wait, what? Like, blink, blink, right? Jesus was definitely not going for likes and subscribers at this point. He wasn't trying to build up his, <laughs> so as a matter of fact, he, he made it even tougher for people to understand. Can you imagine being there and hearing this? And having the people, if you read the whole chapter, they was like, wait a minute, bread from heaven, Jesus, you from, we know your parents, your parents is right here. You, you grew up right down the street, Jesus. How are you bread from heaven? We know your whole family. Come on now. And then it's like, okay, so what are we doing? Cannibalism? Is this what we're doing? What is he talking about? He's gone mad. There's a lot of things like, are we doing vampires and in in, we drinking blood and, and eating? They was too much. They said, you know what? This is where we get off the bus, Jesus. What in the world are you talking about? And for those who go to church, have you ever invited someone to church on a communion Sunday? And then who is not very church, you know, like, oh, okay, I'll go to your church. I'll check it out. And then all we doing is a, the blood that Jesus Oh, the blood, I know it was the blood. And we just, yes, the blood. Can you imagine what people might feel when they come here like, what are, what's going on here? A lot of talk about blood and broken bodies. Like, what are we doing? This is what the followers of Jesus might have experienced in this moment. Because the law of Moses, Moses clearly forbade drinking blood. So they were like, what are, you, what are you talking about, Jesus? How can this be? And just for background context, if you read verse six, uh, chapter 6, this is right after Jesus did the miracle of the loaves, right? The loaves when, when Jesus made filet of fish, filet of fish sandwiches for everybody with fish and bread. He did that for everybody at that time. But I always want to point out whenever you see a miracle in the Bible, it's not just for sensation's sake. It's always pointing to something. It's always talking or telling. Like when people have withered hands or people have leprosy, it was always about the condition of your heart or the things that have withered up. It was always a message behind it. So he had just did that miracle. People were like seeking him like he was paparazzi. He was trying, everywhere Jesus went, people were showing up. But just like our song today, they weren't showing up just to see Jesus. They was being typical hood folks that was coming for the free lunch. Like, are you going to do that free bread again? Because uh, uh, we brought bags this time. They weren't seeking Jesus for Jesus. They were seeking Jesus for what Jesus can do for them. And they were also seeking signs. They started grumbling. Can you imagine after he did that amazing miracle, they started demanding more signs. We want another sign. Can you do something else? So we just know that you're the Messiah. And we can't be mad at them because we do the same thing. How many times Jesus has come through for you? You be like, so Jesus, can you uh, just one more time? I just want to make sure you're real. Can you pay my rent one more time? Even though I didn't pay it so many other. 
right? We do the same thing, grumbling and complaining. And that's why I love this chapter. Because right after they were like, give us a sign. We want more food. We done. Jesus hit them with, I am the bread of life. Jesus is a cold piece. Y'all got to feel this with me. Jesus is a cold piece. Jesus hit them with, I am the bread of life. Guess what? I'm the sign. You looking for a sign? It's me. You want more bread? Okay, it's me. I am the bread of life. Someone say the bread of life. This is a, this is a, Jesus was throwing out big claims. Are y'all following with me? Jesus is throwing out big claims. First of all, Jesus said, I am the living water. What? Living water? Water that's alive? Come on, what do, then he also threw out, I am the light of the world. Come on, the basic elements that we need as humans. We need water to survive. We need light. Now he hollering, I am the bread of life. Come on, you got to give Jesus some props because I think as C.S. Lewis said, either he was the biggest liar or he was delusional or he really is who he said he is. You have to decide that for yourself. Big claims. I'm the bread of life. Now, when we read this, it's easy to interpret it from our modern lens in our non-carb world where bread is quite controversial. Amen. Anybody on a low-carb diet? Anyone try keto and you're like, they say, they say, no, no, no bread on keto, right? Anybody remember that whole, what was that, California, Miami diet, somewhere? They was just like, stop eating carbs. Anybody tried that for a minute? All right, yeah. So when I hear bread, I'm thinking more Hawaiian rolls <laughs> than and the, all the things I'm not supposed to have, like Cinnabon and all the like. This is when Jesus said, "I am the bread of life." I'm like, "Yep, yep, Hawaiian rolls. I see it, right?" <laughs> but in ancient Palestine culture, bread was the main staple food. Bread was the vital part of their diet. It made up like 75% of their daily diet. Because why? Carbohydrates are the main source of your, your, your fuel. It gives you fuel. It gives you somebody too much fuel and it converts to sugar and then when it turns sugar, it converts to fat and then y'all know the rest, right? So we don't always want carbohydrates, but this is wild that Jesus is equating himself with bread. What are you saying, Jesus? Jesus is saying that he is essential for life. I need y'all to catch this with me. The life Jesus is referring to was not the physical life, but he was talking about eternal life. Jesus was trying to get these Jews to stop thinking about the physical realm and get into the spiritual realm. That's what we're talking about today. He was showing them that what he brings to the table as a Messiah, like when he was doing that miracle of the loaves, it was actually pointing to something. That physical bread perishes. Amen? But spiritual bread brings eternal life. Jesus as bread is actually more important because it provides nourishment to our souls. Somebody say, my soul. My soul. What is your soul? Can you point to your soul? Would you even know what your soul is? Your soul can refer to the entire person of who you are, your consciousness, your desires, your emotions. It, re it can refer to your life essence. It's the center of your being. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about real soul food. I know you think you know soul food. How many know good soul food? Yeah. How many had a mama in them or a granny in them who really like, yeah, really got down? And you know how you feel when you taste the macaroni and cheese? You know that feeling that comes over you when you... When you got the greens and when, you, when you're going into the dressing, come on, I don't get no amens. Y'all looking at y'all might not have had no good soul food. This is the real soul food that we're talking about. And the question is, don't forget, I brought my own amen, so y'all can just go ahead and look at me. It's okay. The question is, if Jesus is the bread of life, 
then why are our souls starving? This is the question that's on the table. Why are we so unhappy? Why are we going through so much? Why do we feel so depleted? Why do we try to fill up everything else in our lives with everything but Jesus? It's a question that we have to deal with. And I'm just going to do three points, and I am out your way. Of why. Why Jesus? Why should Jesus be the bread of life? You're going to hear it so much today. I want you to think about it. I want you to internalize it. I want you to put it into your heart. Why must Jesus be the bread of life? The first reason is why, why we need this is because we must internalize Jesus. Can you say that? I must internalize Jesus. I've been trying to find a way to really articulate what I'm trying to say because it's so important. I love this verse when he says, I tell you, it's real flesh. When you eat the flesh of the Son, you, can, you cannot have eternal life without it. An unopened loaf does a person no good. You could put a loaf of bread. Hey, you ever brought loaf? You ever brought a loaf of bread and you forgot to eat it? And it's like, oh, I'll let the bread go bad, right? An unopened loaf does not do anyone any good. If I am hungry, so hungry, and we go to a restaurant and you simply read the menu to me, I will not be full. From you just reading me the menu. Impossible. Eating is something that's intentional that you must do for yourself. Yeah. Nobody can't make you eat nothing you don't like. Picky eaters, where y'all at? Ask a toddler. Try to get them a toddler food that they don't want to eat. You, you, can't make, you can't make anyone eat. This faith that we have must be internalized. It has to be put inside of you. That's why the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's not just enough to observe and hear. It's not just enough to come and see. He said, taste it. You ever tried to get somebody to convince them that a dish is good and they only want to taste like a little small crumb? And you're looking at them like, you can't even get the full experience. You ain't even swished it around in your mouth enough to say if you like it or not because you're just eating a little bitty crumb. I don't know if you've ever observed or participated in a wine tasting. It's a whole experience. You're smelling it. You're sniffing it. You're swirling it around. You're actually, it's an experience. This is what God is asking us to do. Oh, taste and see. It's an experience. Your faith requires intentionality. You get to choose how much you want. Like the miracle of the loaves, it said they walked away. Everyone was full and had enough. This is why there's no scarcity in the kingdom of God. You can get as much as you want of Jesus. It's up to you. It's up to you how much you want. There is no such thing as a low-carb diet in the spirit. Come on, somebody's about to shout. It, would, it should have been a shout right there. There's no, you can't fill up. Eat as much as you want because there's no, there's no limit in God. Secondly, secondly, how do, we, how do we experience Jesus as the bread of life? The second thing is that we must realize that only Jesus satisfies, period. Only Jesus satisfies. If you haven't learned this, you will. It's a lesson that everyone who follows Jesus has to uh, come to terms with. Uh, can someone tell me what is the answer to the, the, what is the black answer to the famous question, can we have McDonald's? Come on. See, we all grew up at the same. You got some McDonald's money, it's usually the typical black answer. Um, why? Why? Not only because our parents uh, were cheap, but they were, most of the time, there was a better option at home. 
You ever had the mama be like, I can make a hamburger. What? We don't eat that. They got the white bread and the, you know, remember the white bread hamburgers? Soggy. And you're like, I don't want it. But turns out, news break, it was actually more nutritious than McDonald's. <laughs> There's better options at home. Mostly everything we love is full of empty calories. Things that fill us up but have no nutritional values. Why does life work like this? Think of everything you love that you want to eat. It's usually not kale. It is kale. We have a vegan here. We, it is kale. But you have to develop it. We're going to talk about that love. You, gotta, you had to work your way to that love affair. You wasn't just like, oh, let me just go on a picnic and have some kale. Now you can. It's good. I believe you. I, I, I know. I'm a witness. Um, but that same thing works with us spiritually. Most of the things we love and we crave are just aren't. It's just empty calories. It does nothing for us. It tickles our fancy, but then it usually leaves us in a state of regret. Right? Um, why, why do we crave what is bad over the food that gives us life? And this was what um, Minister Lilanda was talking about, maturing our palate. You might need to re mature your palate. Some of us still have the little baby palates, and we don't want to, like, no, I don't want that. I'm a, I have a baby palate with spicy food. I'm sorry. I want to be cool like y'all, but I just can't do it. Like, just give me mild, mild, extra mild. That's what I be saying. Can I have extra mild? Um, but we need to re mature our palate and change our taste. Like, you know, anyone did a Daniel fast with us before? When you go into the Daniel fast, you're like, how are we not going to do meats and sweets? But by the end of the fast, you're like, I actually don't even need the meats and sweets. I just might, your, your, your palate changes. And this is what happens to us in the spirit. Yeah. The Lord is in, encouraging us to change our palate. To mature our palate to the things that we, we really, that will bring us life. Here's the indicator of sickness usually. No appetite. When someone is sick, they usually don't have an appetite, right? They don't really want to eat. That's usually an indicator in our spiritual lives too. If you have no appetite for the things of God, then perhaps there's a sickness afoot, a spiritual sickness that we need to tend to. We are deficit somewhere. Conversely, if all you want is junk food, then that means you're unhealthy. Same in our spiritual lives. Is all we want is junk, things that don't last. We are unhealthy spiritually. When was the last time you've taken your, did a spiritual checkup on yourself? We go to the doctor for our physical checkups. But when have you sat down and reflected, how, how healthy am I spiritually? What do I intake? What am I feeding myself to make sure that I am healthy in my spirit, man? Yeah. These are great questions to ask. Um, I love the concept of Jesus as bread. You know why? You know who taught me why, how I can appreciate this? Um, Olive Garden. Red Lobster. Black Angus. They taught me how to appreciate Jesus as bread. Y'all know why? You remember when, they, well, they, are they? Are they? Yeah, they are. You could just dip out after you get the bread. You could. <laughs> Why? Because we found out, maybe on the third visit, after you ate all the rolls, what happened? You was full. You was full. They came out with a big old steak, and you was like, oh, what I order? <laughs> you eating just a little bit here, a little bit there. That has made me appreciate Jesus as bread. Why? Because bread fills you up. And this is the same way Jesus wants to do in our spirit. Jesus as bread will fill you up to the point where you don't even have no more room 
for foolishness. You don't have any more room for things that aren't good for you. You, I'm already full. I don't even need it. What, what, they, what y'all talking about? No, actually, I'm good. Or where y'all going? No, actually, I'm fine. I'm, I'm satisfied. I don't need your validation. I don't need points. I don't need your, 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 to come in for you to tell me who I am. I'm actually full. Jesus as bread is amazing. Now, I want you to listen very closely because if you listen to this statement, I can save you a whole lot of time, a lot of effort. I can save you a lot of energy. I can save you a lot of heartbreak, and I can save you a lot of regret. Are you ready? The phrase is, only Jesus satisfies. I want you to internalize that. Only Jesus satisfies. Please listen to me. If I had a megaphone, I would shout it. Only Jesus satisfies. You can search your whole life. You will spend a lot of money. You will end up with a lot of heartbreak and regret. You will end up in rehab somewhere until you realize that only Jesus satisfies. Only Jesus satisfied. Come on, can you say it? Say only Jesus satisfied. Not that boo, not that job, not that, you know, we talking about Jesus as bread, but a lot of times we chasing the bread. We chasing the give me my money. That's the wrong bread. That bread won't satisfy. Only Jesus. If you don't take nothing else from this this sermon, please walk away with this statement. Only Jesus satisfies. Only Jesus has the nutrients for your soul. The things that last. The things that stay. The last thing, last thing, last thing. This bread that Jesus is talking about, this life, bread of life, it represents Jesus' sacrifice. Now this is this just what this just blew me away because I'm always I was just thinking that the parable of I mean the miracle of the loaves was just a cute story. It was like wow Jesus you're amazing that you did the things, but it was actually pointing to what Jesus was about to do for us. It's actually a deeper meaning. Have you ever heard of the phrase "There's no free lunch," right? That truly is the, the meaning. There, there, there is no free lunch. Just think about it. Everything we eat was once alive in some way. Think about it. Whether it's our, our vegan brothers and sisters or if our, our, our carnivores in the room. Everything we eat was once alive. Anything that humans can actually digest and gain nutrition from was at one point a living thing. So the same thing works in our spiritual lives. Jesus said, whoever eats this bread, that is whoever appropriates Jesus by faith as the sustenance of their life, my flesh, which I give, as he was looking forward to Calvary, providing eternal life, it would be costly to the giver for the life of the world, pointing to the substitutionary character of Christ's self-sacrifice for the world. See, Jesus, what, this was what Jesus was saying. This is, is real flesh. No, what, the bread that I'm giving you, no, it's real flesh. And the, and the blood that you're about to drink, no, it's real. Because I'm about to give myself for you. When we eat his flesh, we make this faith our own. When we partake of it, we accept God's love and adopt Christ's sacrifice as our guiding principle of life. See, that miracle was about Jesus' body being broken. Broken. For all, broken. He said every time he went to break it, it just kept multiplying. Broken, 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 till everyone was satisfied. Jesus, the bread of life. Jesus promised to satisfy their deepest hunger and thirst if they would come to him and put their faith in him. 
And even though this crowd saw the miracles, which I don't, you know, sometimes it's not always good to get caught up in a lot of things that you could always see. They saw the miracles, but they refused to believe in him because they were too focused on the temporary. Please learn this lesson. They were focused on things that were perishing. Things of this world are perishing. Things of this world are temporary. The things that we are chasing, if you were gone, it would be that job that you are always consumed with will replace you about a week after you leave, right? These things are temporary, but what Jesus is offering is eternal. Jesus said, don't labor for food that perishes, but for the food which endures into everlasting life. So what are our takeaways? If consuming Christ is the equivalent of trusting in Christ, then how are we How much are we consuming consistently? If the equation is Jesus um, trusting in Christ is taking him as a bread, how much are we consuming? Do you know that the average person in America spends over nine hours a day consuming media? Uh, People middle-aged, 18 to 34, spend around three hours a day on social media platforms. I know it's the truth because your little phone will tell you how much you've been on there. The average time spent with audio is four hours and 32 minutes. What are we consuming? Think about what do you consume? What, what, what is dominating your spiritual appetite? Think about it. Now, I believe in a balance. You know, there was a time when holiness was that's all you could. You couldn't go to no movie. You couldn't go read. You didn't do nothing. But I believe in a balance, but it, should, it, should it be a, uh, the weight on your scale should lean more toward the spiritual things and less of the things that are, you know, aren't really providing you nourishment, just like our diet, a healthy diet, you know, mostly the good stuff, a little donut here and there, you know, <laughs> ain't never hurt nobody. Right, but when we're off balance, that's when things become unhealthy. To nourish, to provide with food and other sustenances necessary for growth and health and good condition. Many of us are overnourished on entertainment, junk food, and undernourished on the bread of life. So spiritually, it is true. You are what you eat. You are what you eat. You are what, if you are listening to a bunch of ratchetness all day long, non, that's all you listen to, then you will be what you eat. Yeah, Pastor Mike talks about it all the time. When someone is on their way to do something shady or a crime, they're not listening to Amazing Grace. They listening to, I ain't never scared, you know, whatever. They got to get, you know, yeah, you got to get ready. You are what you eat. You ever ner- wonder um, why, why are we lacking so much peace? Why are we lacking so much joy? Why we need so much counseling? Why we need so much handhold? Like, why, why, why do I feel an emptiness inside? Why am I just, I don't understand. I kind of come to church, but I'm just not feeling it. Perhaps we need to do an inventory of what are we feeding ourselves spiritually. Amen. I, I remember I got my own amen, so thank you. Amen. Amen. I know y'all need to just settle it in. Bread is ordinary food that restores health and life and strength. So how much more will Jesus do this to our souls, y'all? Some of us, and, I, and I'm, I'm closing, I promise. Some of us are just spiritually hangry. I'm just going to say it. That's all. You're like, what's wrong with me? I don't understand. I'm so, I'm, uh, the, you, honey, honey, you hangry. And the spirit remember that like, you need a snicker? You need a spiritual snicker. You just, ain't nothing wrong with you. You need to eat. You, you ever been like, just, I'm just, I, I just, some of y'all is like before coffee, y'all don't talk to me. 
some of we just spiritually hangry. We need more of what Jesus, so what, what would a consistent, nutrient-rich spiritual diet look like? I know you're like, okay, Pastor Nia, that was great. Thank you, Jesus, bread of life, got it. But what does this really look like? Because we serve an invisible Jesus that lives on the inside of us. He's not like the Hawaiian roll that I could just pick up that I'm not supposed to eat, but it's delicious. Or the little Acme bread, people. Y'all said y'all love the little Acme. Who, how many people be in line at that little Acme? Ooh, y'all be in line at the little... Ooh, y'all be in the lines. I can't do it, Lord. Okay, focus. Focus. So how? I heard it's the best bread. Anybody want to bring me some? I'll be glad. Um, how do we... What does this look like? Because you just can't eat crumbs and be filled... I do a little, you know, a little Bible app here, a little reading here, a little reading there, read my little verse on the go. Crumbs. You can't get rich on reading my one little worship song and I'm on my way. Crumbs. Can't get full on crumbs. You can't get the fullness of the flavor on crumbs. And you can't just eat once a week and stay healthy. You can't just come here on Sunday and be like, I did the thing, I got up, I turned on the TV, and I check church, feel great about myself. So how does that equate in the natural? You can eat one meal a week and be healthy? How? So that that's how our spirit is. How we got to eat more than once. And this is not really, this is just kind of like highlighting. This is just like celebration. This is more like community. These little talks that we did, y'all ain't going to remember what I said on Wednesday. Somebody be like, how was church? You be like, they, we talked about something. It was, what, what was it? Bread, something. Right? So it has to be more than that. And, and stale bread is no good. So maybe you got a word before, years ago. Maybe you had a really great encounter with God three weeks ago. But that bread is stale now. Stale bread is no good. And even uneaten bread molds. You got to even that y'all cute little acme, that, that bread, why y'all keep getting in line? Because that only lasts about three days. Because it's fresh. It don't have a lot of um, preservatives and the additive. It's going to last about three days. This is why Jesus said, I am the manna that comes down from heaven. Woo! Do you understand the significance of that? When, and when the children of Israel were out in the, in the wilderness, he said, every day I'll just provide bread for you. And if you try to hoard it, if you try to keep it, it will spoil but every day you were to be intentional and go out and get the bread. I will provide it every day. What does the Lord's prayer say? Give us this day our what? Ah. Hallelujah. So what does this look like? I'm going to move out the way. Spiritual disciplines. We say it. We've, we've said it a lot. Um, Y'all remember the year when that was the, our spiritual our, our word for the year, the last slide, spiritual disciplines. Oh, you can't really see the bottom. I'm sorry. What does it look like? Here's just a, here's just a, little, a little peek. I'm sorry, you can't see the bottom, but you can look it up. Twelve spiritual disciplines. How do we eat consistently? Instead of being like, y'all go read your Bibles. That, you know, th that's great. I do want you to read your word. But there's so many other ways. Discipline. Anyone ever been on a diet? It takes discipline. Anyone trying to go to the gym? It takes discipline. You don't feel like doing it, but you're going to get up and do it because you know it's good for you. I don't know if there's any way we could raise up the, the top, the bottom. Um, Mike's going to work on that. Um, what are spiritual disciplines like? There's inward disciplines. There's meditations. You could pray, fasting, studying. These are the things that are for your inward soul. There's outward disciplines. Things like simplicity. Words you don't hear in a capitalistic society. Living simply. Being in solitude sometimes without your phone. 
without people around you to talk to all the time, just getting alone with yourself to be thoughts and your own self-reflection. A lot of people are scared to be by themselves because you don't want to hear the thoughts that are going on inside. That was what the problem was with COVID. People didn't want to be, I don't want to have to deal with, I'd rather keep myself busy. No, solitude, submission. So it's okay to take, to let somebody else lead you sometimes. You don't have to be in charge all the time. You don't have to be in control all the time. Service. This is what we're trying to highlight here at The Way. Giving more service, giving to others. A lot of people find that when you serve others, you actually feel great. You start feeling, when you take your focus off yourself and help somebody else, you feel lighter and I feel good, and let's do this again, right? And then under the ones you can't really see is corporate disciplines. And that's what we do when we come together, confession. Thank you, brother. Confession. You know, sometimes it's good to when you're confess when you're not 100%. No, I'm actually not fine. Or you know what? I did bother me the other day, but this is how we do life in community, worship. Seeking guidance, not being in isolation, and then celebration. That's why we, enc we encourage an expressive worship, because we are to celebrate all God is and all God does in our life. These are spiritual disciplines. If you're, if you're looking for a way, how can I tap into who Jesus is as the bread of life? How do I consume Jesus on a regular basis? Spiritual disciplines. Just like you got to discipline yourself for anything else, discipline your spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand together. And as we stand, let's just have a moment of prayer. And I, the prayer that I want to pray today is that God will restore or awaken a spiritual hunger for him, for God, for Jesus. Is that anybody's prayer? God, awaken a hunger. If I have absolutely no appetite for you, then that's an indicator that something's off. Because God has so, been so amazing to us. God is so all-consuming. And if we have moved away from, from, from what from that appetite for him that the Jesus said blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled are you tired of living on e are you tired of seeking and wanting and no fulfillment in your life i promise you if you set your intention to feed yourself spiritually you will discover that you have a joy unspeakable and you'll be like where did it come from ain't no way people gonna be looking at you like how girl how are you doing this anybody ever experienced that a peace that passes all understanding when you feed on Jesus people are like aren't you worried ain't you stressed you know actually I'm God gonna take care of it I'm not even I'm not even losing my mind you'll be a wonder to those around you like how are you doing this it comes from what you are feeding yourself. What you're feeding, what you're feeding. And then you'll just wonder, you'll just be walking in so much joy and peace and new revelation of God. So this is what we're praying. If you want to receive, ask God for a new hunger. Can you just lift your hands in any kind of capacity? God, here we are. We're here as a community. God, we need more of you. We want to experience you as the bread of life, the one who gives us sustenance, the one who provides our soul with nourishment. God, we need you. We are tired of doing it on our own. We have found that we will search all over and we really can't find anybody else like you. Nothing else satisfies Jesus. We've tried it. We've tried it. And it's only you who provides what we need in our souls. So God, uh, renew our hunger for you. Awaken a hunger for you. 
God, let us wake up and say, God, what can I do to feed my spirit? Yes, yes, yes. The old folks used to say, feed me till I won't no more. Feed me, Jesus. Yes, God, I need more of you. I'm tired of junk food. I'm tired of the things that don't last. I'm tired of the things that don't bring me anything but harm. Fill the empty void in my soul, God. Those who are looking for fulfillment is found in Jesus. If you're looking for purpose, it's found in Jesus. God, reveal yourself to us. We want more of you, God. Let it be real. You said this is real bread. This is real drink. God, be real to us. We don't want to just have a Sunday morning experience with you only. We want to walk daily with you. Give us a hunger. Give us a, vor a vor ferocious appetite for more of you. More of you, God. We thank you that we're going to come together as a community and just be on fire. And just re re consume more of you. When we come here for service, it's just a culmination of what God has already done in our lives. Zari, it's just us coming to celebrate what God has been talking to us and why as we've been walking with God. It's not to get necessarily new information. It's to, it's to continue to walk in what God is already doing in us throughout the week. So, God, we give you praise. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do. Feed us till we want no more. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, can you clap your hands for the bread of life? Can we begin to worship Jesus as the bread? as the sustenance, as the one that makes us full. Jesus, we love you and we worship you. So we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you.